Today in this lecture we are going to discuss the treatment of essential hypertension and we will just uh, broadly uh, classify the different uh, treatment options. We are not going into de detail treatment of the essential hypertension which we are going to discuss in pathology and medicine lectures. Now coming to the point we discussed that primary or essential hypertension is known as primary hypertension because the cause of the hypertension is not known. When the cause of the hypertension is known, then it is labeled a secondary instead of the primary. Now we discussed that the the risk factors, the risk factors for primary hypertension basically come from the lifestyle, and uh, we discussed that uh, decreased physical activity and uh, weight gain, smoking and junk food basically leads to, or basically are a risk for the development of essential hypertension the exact cause for the essential or primary hypertension is not known but different uh, risks are associated with uh, essential hypertension so by addressing those risks we can treat the essential hypertension which is basically the most common type of hypertension or uh, around 90 to 95 percent of people with hypertension basically have the primary or essential hypertension now the treatment options for the essential hypertension are broadly classified into two categories the lifestyle modification and pharmacological treatment now these treatment uh, options basically are purely from the uh, physiology point of view when we go into medicine then we will discuss each and everything in detail now the lifestyle modification uh, which can uh, basically change which can basically help in reduction of the hypertension include increasing the physical activity the second option in lifestyle modification include weight loss then quitting smoking and uh, alcohol then decreasing the intake of salt and increasing the intake of healthy foods we discussed that due to decrease activity and due to weight gain and due to alcohol and smoking and due to increased intake of salt and junk food, the weight basically increases. Weight increases. And when the weight increases, the, the work of the heart, the work of the heart basically increases. So by decreasing the weight, by decreasing the weight, the work of the heart or the cardiac output basically decreases. It decreases. So by decreasing the cardiac output, we are basically helping the heart and uh, then it uh, decreases basically the hypertension. So the, the lifestyle changes, the lifestyle changes which will help in decreasing or treating the primary essential hypertension includes the increasing the physical activity, uh, reducing the weight or weight loss for those people who have obesity then quitting smoking and alcohol decreasing salt intake and uh, increasing the intake of healthy foods which contains uh, fibers and uh, low carbs now each and every option in the lifestyle modification can be discussed in detail and in depth but we are not going into detail in this uh, particular lecture now if a person is unable to de uh, decrease the hypertension with the help of these lifestyle modification then there are different pharmacological treatment options available and they are broadly classified into vasodilators and natriuretic and diuretic drugs what basically vasodilators dr vasodilator drugs do they basically dilate the blood vessels of the kidneys they dilate the blood vessels of the kidneys and what diuretic or natriuretic drugs do they basically reduce the reabsorption of salt and water by the renal tubules and helps in increase removal of the salt and water from the body which again helps in decreasing the cardiac output and decreasing the peripheral resistance and decreasing the uh, hypertension or arterial pressure now the vasodilator drugs the vasodilator drugs they may act ultimately they are basically decreasing they are dilating the blood vessels of the kidneys or in other parts or other organs of the body 
बट ब्रॉडली दे एक्ट बाई थ्री मेन वेज और थ्री मेन मेथड्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दे मे इनहिबिट द सिंपथेटिक नर्वस सिस्टम और दे मे ब्लॉक द एक्शन ऑफ सिंपथेटिक नर्वस सिस्टम ऑन रीनल वेस्कुलेचर नाउ दिस इज अ नेफ्रॉन एंड हेयर इज द ब्लड वेसल इन द किडनी द वेजो डायरेटेड ड्रग्स इट मे इनहिबिट द सिंपथेटिक्स दिस इज अ सिंपथेटिक नर्व इट इज कमिंग ऑन इट इज कमिंग टू एक्ट ऑन द दिस रेड कलर ब्लड वेसल नाउ वेजो डायरेटेड ड्रग्स ऑफ डिफरेंट काइंड मे आइदर ब्लॉक द सिंपथेटिक एक्टिविटी विच बेसिकली कॉज वेजो कंस्ट्रिक्शन दे कंस्ट्रिक्ट द ब्लड वेसल or they may not inhibit or block the sympathetic nervous system rather it may block the action of sympathetic nervous system at this point on the blood vessel and it may prevent the vasoconstriction which will lead to vasodilation vasodilation will decrease the peripheral resistance it will decrease peripheral resistance and when peripheral resistance decreases or arterial pressure falls and hypertension uh, or blood pressure decreases then vasodilator drugs may directly relax the smooth muscles of the renal vasculature these drugs some of these drugs may directly relax may directly act on these blood vessels and it will basically relax kind of relax these blood vessels when they relax again the peripheral resistance may fall or there will be less accumulation of the fluid or and salt in the body and there will be a fall in arterial pressure or blood pressure which will again be beneficial in the treatment of hypertension finally the vasodilator drugs some of the kind there are different kinds of vasodilator drugs and each and every category may act through one or multiple methods now some of the vasodilator drugs basically block the action of renin angiotensin system on renal vasculature some drugs basically block the action of renin and angiotensin system on the blood vessels now we have discussed that renin and angiotensin they also cause vasoconstriction so by blocking the action of renin and angiotensin system on uh the blood was uh, the renal vasculature here again the vasoconstriction is prevented as well as accumulation of salt in water with the help of renin is prevented or blocked so it again leads to vasodilation again there is a decrease in the peripheral resistance again there is a decrease in the cardiac output again the arterial pressure falls in the blood pressure basically decreases and helps in the treatment of hypertension now the natiuretic or diuretic drugs they simply they simply prevent the reabsorption of salt and water they simply prevent the reabsorption of salt and water into the tubule into the renal tubule once once the salt and water are filtered out of the uh, tubule they are basically reabsorbed they are reabsorbed by by preventing the reabsorption process of salt and water the salt and water go into the urine when salt and water go into the urine there is decrease in fluid volume there is decrease in peripheral resistance there is decrease in cardiac output and there is decrease in arterial pressure and there is decrease in the uh blood pressure and again there is uh, basically a treatment of the hypertension so the treatment option for the blood pressure high blood pressure or essential hypertension uh, are classified into two broad categories the lifestyle changes and the pharmacological treatment the lifestyle changes include increasing the physical activity uh, weight loss quitting the smoking and alcohol uh decreasing the intake of salt and increasing the intake of healthy food the pharmacological treatment option basically uh, are further classified into the vasodilator drugs and uh, natiuretic and diuretic drugs now that's all 
uh, about the primary and essential treatment of primary or essential hypertension and we will discuss these things in detail in our pathology and medicine lectures thanks a lot for watching the video